So last night was the vice presidential debate between Governor Tim Walls and J.D. Vance. And I wanted to come in and do a quick like recap of my thoughts because, yeah, I went live last night, but we had <laughs> we had some technical difficulties with the live like for the first hour of the live. I'm having conversation. I'm talking. I'm watching the debate. But nobody could hear me. <laughs> so if you're looking for the replay of the live, baby, you won't find it. <laughs> I took it down because you cannot hear me. When I tell you that I'm holding conversations with commenters down in the live, when I tell you that I am providing commentary on the lies that J.D. Vance was telling, when I tell you that I was fully active and communicative during my life, <laughs> I was, and nobody could hear it. So I got a I got a few videos that I want to share that highlight some of my favorite parts of the live. First, I want to say this. A lot of people were expecting a WWE match between Walls and Vance. And I'm not sure if that's what I expected. I don't know what I expected. I expected a lot of lies. I expected a lot of lies and we got a lot of lies. I expected a lot of yapping, a lot of talking that wasn't going to explain anything. And and, and we got that. We got that. Um, but I, the way that I watched this debate and what I took from this debate and what I can appreciate is that Governor Tim Walls was having a conversation he was having a discussion and he was doing it in a respectful way and by him setting that tone it sort of um drew in jd vance to do pretty much of the same so it wasn't an attack coming from tim walls but more like a discussion that's what I took from it. And I could definitely appreciate it because my anxiety level was high going into watching this debate because I was preparing myself for attacks and then a response to the attack. And that's not how it went, in my opinion. What are your thoughts on that? Anywho, from the very beginning, from the first question, I saw that Governor Walls was very nervous. The people in the chat were also commenting how they could tell he was very nervous. He was very nervous at the very beginning. And I think that filtered on through until like the first break, the first break, the first commercial break. Um, he was trying to gain his footing. He was answering the questions. Um, he was slow and he was methodical in his responses. He was measured and he was very informative. He was making sure that we understood the words that were coming out of his mouth. After that first commercial break, it's like he found his groove, right? Um, he was trucking right along. He was he was doing his thing. He was answering the question. He was he was um, including J.D. Vance in his responses. And then towards the end, baby, he delivered a one two knockout punch. J.D. Vance, however, did provide what I expected from him. I expected a lot of eloquent words. I, I, I expected long and drawn out responses that did not answer the questions. I said over and over and over during the live that J.D. Vance, that he is a slickster. His responses are straight up used car salesman um slickster he came off he he tried to come off more relatable 
I don't know if that was if he was successful in that attempt, but JD Vance is a slickster. If you weren't tuned in to what his responses were, you would think he was knowledgeable on government process and policy. You would think that he was profound in some of his responses. But if you understand policy and if you have been paying attention, then you know that all of J.D. Vance's responses was nothing more than a word salad. J.D. Vance's responses was full of yap, yap, yapping and lie, lie, lying. So much so that one of the moderators did sneak in a fact check and J.D. Vance got mad that she fact checked him. Check this out. Thank you, Governor. And just to clarify for our viewers, Springfield, Ohio does have a large number of Haitian migrants who have legal status, temporary protected status. Well, Mar 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 but, but, Thank you, no, Senator. We have no, no, so much to get to. Mar Mar I, I think Mar it's important we're because... We're going to turn out of the, the economy. Debate, Thank Mar you. The, the, the rules were that the you economy, guys were going to fact check. And since you're fact checking me, I think it's important to say what's actually going on. So there's an application called the CBP One app where you can go on as an illegal migrant, apply for for asylum or apply for parole and be granted legal status at the wave of a Kamala Harris open border wall. He was so upset over that fact check and wanting to continue to demonize and dehumanize the Haitian population in Springfield, Ohio, that they had to cut both of their mics because when J.D. Vance went into talking about that CPB1 application and, and tried to tie that to Kamala Harris, J.D., uh, not J.D., uh, Governor Walls tried to step in to say, who created that CVP1 application? That was created under the Trump administration. There was another point that I wanted to highlight when the discussion, the debate turned toward the topic of abortion. And I loved how um, Governor Walls responded to the questions surrounding the abortion topic. There was one point during the debate and that discussion that I wanted to highlight and share with you. I'm going to respond on the, on the pro-abortion piece of that. No, we're not. We're pro-women. We're pro-freedom to make your own choice. We know what the implications are to not be that. Women having miscarriages, women not getting the care, physicians feeling like they may be prosecuted for providing that care. And as far as making sure that we're educating our children and giving them options, Minnesota's a state with one of the lowest teen pregnancy rates. We understand that too. We know that the options need to be available and we make that true. We also make it, we're a top three state for the best place to raise children. But these two things to try and say that we're, we're pro-children, but we don't like this, or, or you guys are pro-abortion, that's not the case at all. We are pro-freedoms for women to make their choices, and we're going, and Kamala Harris is making the case, to make options for children more affordable, a $6,000 child tax credit, but we're not going to base that on the backs of making someone like Amber Thurman drive 600 miles to try and get... They love to say that Democrats are pro-abortion. We're pro health care. We are pro trusting women. If a woman decides that she needs to have an abortion, that is her choice and her reason for it alone. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with you. In the words of Governor Tim Walls, mind your own damn business. What the Republican Party has done, the Republican Party has used abortion to legalize the murder of women across this country. And they are murdering these women across the country by way of physicians in hospitals across the country. That is what's happening. Was that the intent I don't know, but that is what's happening. Instead of taking a step back and seeing what is happening, they can't, they can't fathom 
going back to the drawing board and saying, this wasn't what we wanted. We need to fix these problems. Women are dying. Rest in peace to Amber Nicole Thurman. Rest in peace to Candy Miller. Women are being charged with murder. Shout out to Amari Marsh, who was charged with murder for having a miscarriage. Shout out to Governor Walls for talking about specifically some of these women on the debate stage last night. And then the final highlight that I want to bring to you is the one to knockout punch in the end. Now, a lot of people are upset that this discussion didn't take place from the top. I, I, can, I can understand that. I can get that. If, if the question was asked from the very beginning, I think that J.D. Vance would not have been as arrogant and smug with some of his answers, no answers, this would have knocked him off of his game. But I think because Tim Walls was so nervous in the beginning and he found his groove after the after the first commercial break and he was he he was hot as the debate was ending, I think this question came right when it needed to come. And of course that question was JD Vance and the question on democracy and the fact that Donald Trump is still running around here talking about he did not lose the election. Check this out. Billy, just say he is still saying he didn't lose the election. I would just ask that. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? That is, a damning, to, that is a damning non-answer. Has she, it's a damning non-answer for you to not talk about censorship. Obviously, Donald Trump and I think that there were problems in 2020. We've talked about it. I'm happy to talk about That was a damning non-answer. What J.D. Vance told you in that response is that he will go against the Constitution to not certify an election that they lost. Anything to gain power in this country. That's what J.D. Vance just told the American people. Anywho, overall, I do believe that Governor Tim Walls um, won this debate. And he won this debate by how he presented himself on this stage, by his informative, well thought out um, responses that were factual. Um, he won this debate because he showed that he was relatable and he was empathetic and he understands the plight of the American people. That's why I believe Tim Walls won this debate. Furthermore, Tim Walls won this debate because I always thought that the vice presidential debate was all about um, the, the two candidates for vice president uplifting the presidential candidate that they are running with, talking about their policy, talking about their record, um, talking about where that candidate stands on certain issues. And then they that that vice presidential candidate is to talk about their personal experience, their professional experience and what they could bring to the ticket. I believe Governor Tim Walls did that. I do not believe that J.D. Vance did that. J.D. Vance did not talk a lot about Donald Trump's policies because he really doesn't have any policies. There was a specific question that I remember when they were talking about um, the economy. J.D. Vance was asked to explain their um, economic policy and how they were going to pay for it as far as some type of cuts they were talking about. 
What is Donald Trump's policy? What does he talk about? Tariffs. And, and how is J.D. Vance going to explain that? And so what did J.D. Vance do? He deflected and he yapped, yapped, yapped and lied, lied, lied. So I don't think J.D. Vance was an asset to Donald Trump in any way on the debate stage last night. He wasn't an asset or or a hoorayer for himself. He, he, he couldn't tout about the things that he has done since he's been in Congress because he hasn't been in Congress that long. He hasn't done much of anything. So those are my thoughts. I apologize again last night for the messed up audio in the live, but this is a lot of what I was saying that you all couldn't hear. Get down in the comments and let me know your thoughts. Y'all know that's where we continue the conversation. You get to let me know your thoughts and, and we communicate back and forth down in the comment section. Do you think Governor Tim Walls um, won the debate? Do you think he was weak? I don't think he was weak at all. I think he used a different strategy. And that strategy was to have respectful dialogue, respectful conversation or discussion regarding the issues. He, his goal wasn't to attack J.D. Vance, although we're clear that J.D. Vance's goal was to attack Kamala Harris. And it went, phew, nobody cares because nobody's talking about J.D. Vance this morning. Everybody's talking about Governor Tim Walls.